So welcome everyone to our Chaos, Diversity and Inclusion Working Group meeting on November 11, 2019. Um, do we have any um, agenda items for today? I'd like to discuss, um, I just recent, I I'll talk about the um, DNI badging program and that's progress on that. Okay, excellent. So let's put that in here. So the DNI badging project. Yes, it's um, taking off pretty soon. Yeah. And then I assume you would also Sola and Solo. Oh, do it. Hi. Solo. Hey, nice to meet you. Do you, I assume you would like to also talk about the Node.js questions that we started talking about last week? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I think there are two parts, right? Those questions that we are shipping already because they are already being translated. So we're only doing minor edits and training. Um, but uh, the metrics are like, like beginning are only with metrics. You know, focus areas and, and, and you know, just some, some, some of the early direction uh, so we can brainstorm um, and, and, you know, try to adopt the framework. Okay. So transforming the questions you have into the chaos metrics framework. Um, you know, I, I think starting to build new questions because you know, this is the gateway uh, survey, just the first attempt, right? It's the annual survey that happens anyway. So we just left a couple of questions there. Now we actually want to start considering, um, you know, assuming that in the future we will have actually a sample um, that is that, that can help us understand um, 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 what we, uh, you know, what we hope to, to deliver to, to create a more accessible uh, and inclusive um, open, um, open source uh, experience. Um, and those, those questions will be actually built uh, using your framework um, and they will have you know, a proper uh, structure um, to give us metrics um, that can help us um, you know, plan actions and, and um, get feedback to see whether or not those actions are given the results we would hope for. So, so that, that's a long journey, you know, I, I assume uh, we'll, we'll just get started um, here. That's all. All right. Sounds right, or am I getting anything wrong? That makes sense to me. Um, I think a yep. good place to start for questions too would be under the focus areas. They have a bunch of ways you can, things that you want to ask of your organization um, I put a link there in the chat and um, if you click on any of the focus areas, it has the questions that you kind of want to ask yourself and you can build, definitely build some questions off of that for a survey as well. Yeah. yeah so. Uh... Okay, that sounds to me like uh, we can turn this into a working session. Um, so let's do the reporting first. Matt, what, how is the badging going? Oh yes, um, I just recently um, got a notification that I'm going to be funded for the badging program prototype. Um, so this is the thank you. Um, this is the beginning of a of a program that if you have something like the black duck badging or CII best practices, it's more of a program of um, a badging race on diversity and inclusion best practices. Um, so that's we're just kind of starting that, planning that in the ground for now. Um, but um, I wanted to get that out there that that's uh, exists now. Do you have any, so first of all, I'm super excited that this is coming into being and that we are going to be working on this and that you are leading some of the efforts there. So that's, that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, I know Matt has been talking about this idea for a while to take the DNI metrics that we have for events and finding a way to actually use them and building out a framework for events to self-certify or provide evidence that they have these requirements fulfilled. 
Absolutely. Um, oh. When is the project going to kick up? Um, probably starting in January. Um, we're thinking we're going to do it over the next spring for the prototype and then uh, apply for a couple um, avenues that we can get funding for a full project. Okay. Cool. For all you know, we are here and for input and feedback, always happy to provide yes. that. Thank you. I can also share the proposal if you'd like as well, but it's like a couple pages long. If you have it, we can put in the minutes and then read okay. it outside of the call. Yes, I'll put a link to it. Cool. Thank you. So before we jump into the Node.js questions and building out new metrics, I just remembered that last time we were talking about attendee demographics and we had started working on those. And I think we had to um, cut it short at the end of the meeting. So unless you want to do something else, I suggest we go back into the document for the next 10, 15 minutes to flush out this um, attendee demographics metric. That works for me. Do you hear the airport announcement? Yes. Okay, I apologize for that. <laughs> oh, we just hear that there is airport announcements. Like when you watch a movie, there's like, you know, you can't really tell what they're saying, but you know, they're saying something. So anyway, yeah. Um, so I'm going to put the link, uh, I think, for the doc that you're talking about uh, in the chat, just to help. Uh, um, yeah. Perfect. So I think last time we started working on question description objectives and we got into implementation, but didn't finish there. So let's let's work on it. Um, we can do it quietly, each of us for themselves. And then if we have something we want to discuss, um, we're here to talk about it. Um, just a quick question, because we are definitely out of sync as you know, uh, like last week, it was all like, I'm just taking in the process. Um, like, do we contribute? I don't know if we can, if we're there yet, right? We're, we're too raw. Um, so, so maybe we'll, we'll try to see if we can contribute something here, but uh, we'll just do this as comments at least, uh, nothing more, okay? Makes sense? It makes sense. Uh, so everyone has edit permissions. Yeah. If you want to make suggested edits, that we can talk about and accept. I think that is a perfectly fine way to go about it. Um, the, so the way we approach this typically is that we have the shared Google Doc so that we can edit all at the same time. And everyone is allowed to edit. And what we strive for is to have a short but clear description of what this metric is and how to collect the data. So if you have any ideas, please add them. If there's something that is not clear to you, please flag it and provide an idea for how to make it better. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question. I'm a little bit off. Uh, these attendee demographics are for the, the survey that we are the questions that we are, these uh, previews, how can I say? Uh, no, I, no, I think this, this relates directly to existing metrics of chaos. So, uh, okay, there is nothing to do with the... the... No, not yet, not yet. So, so what we're doing is we're starting there. Because uh, okay. uh, at the tail end of last meeting, there was stuff still remaining in this doc. So before doing a work session on another doc, we would like to, you know, make sure that we're not like uh, leaving something open-ended. Um, and, and so we're wrapping this and then, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get to that. But I mean, uh, ours anyways is not, is not in a rush because we're talking about the future surveys, right? So, so let's, okay. let's use this. This is, a, this is the, how they say, the base foundation for the future. 
Um, look, I, I think this is up to the existing work in the chaos repos. So I'm going to share. I'm going to try to find the right links that relate to this doc, and and and, and then you, you know we can go in the repo. Um, um, you know, afterwards as well. And, uh, okay. All right. So one thing we can also do is uh, do a quick walkthrough of how we structure the work in our chaos project. So what I can do is uh, share my screen and then I'll show you real quick just yeah. to make sure we're on the same page. Um, yeah. So sorry, we're, we're like two weeks now distracting you guys from doing the work and, you know, hopefully. Not at all. Yeah, thank you. Not at all. Um, so chaos as a whole has um, the goal to define metrics and ways to understand the health of communities and one working group, the one that we are meeting for right now is on the aspect of diversity and inclusion. And we organize our, um, our metrics in focus areas. And this came out of research done by Mozilla two years ago on how to understand diversity and inclusion in open source. And so we have event diversity as one focus area, contributor community diversity, communication inclusivity, recognition of good work, leadership, governance, and project and community. Uh, a lot of what you have in your survey right now, I think falls in communication inclusivity. That's correct. That I believe this is the the first concern of our our the first uh, goal of our our survey, and then how to bring more inclusivity to the to the people at all. Yeah. Um, also, a quick question: When you say event, because you know I'm someone at home, and and I, I basically label issues where we're having a meeting as an event issue. So are we talking about Zoom events as, as events or, you know, like face-to-face uh, -face events? So I've always been thinking more about like conferences and meetups and face-to-face -face when we talk about events. Yeah. But we can also have virtual events. I haven't thought about that before. That's a good point. All right. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted the clarity so we would know if it falls all under three or if we're, you know, maybe uh, saturating it uh, if we just put it under three. So, but yeah, yeah so, so we can extend together di uh, event diversity, um, you know, as, as a new direction there to add the virtual component. I would love to be part of that part. Okay. Uh, it's or, an interesting idea. So, so going back to our structure, we always start with the goal. And our goal here, let's say for event diversity is to identify the diversity and inclusion at events. And when we go into the goal, we have several questions. Like how well does the speaker line up for the event represent a diverse set of demographics? And this is where the speaker demographics metric comes in. We have the question, how diverse are the attendees? And that is the one we were just working on with um, identifying the diversity of attendees. And so we follow the goal question metric approach to see, okay, what is it that you want to achieve? What questions do you have on your path getting there? And what metrics can help you to understand if you're on track or where you need to put in more effort? And then for each metric, let's say attendees demographic as the metric, we have a template like we have here in the Google Doc with the title. We restate the question that was driving us towards this metric and we don't bold it actually, but that's fine. And then we have a description about, okay, this metric is, and then we have objectives. Why do we look at the metric? What can we do with it? We talk about the implementation. If you want to start using the metric, what considerations do you have? How do you collect the metric? How do you, how do you collect data? How do you filter it? How do you visualize it? So that's all implementation. And then if there are any resources, uh, we have a section for resources. So that, that is the structure in which we organize the work that we have. Do you have 
uh, questions about this? Uh, no, I understand the structure. Uh, I just don't follow the um, how we are gonna use the the demographics at ND uh, in the process. You see, uh, what what will be the outcome of the the the, the act of the step that we are doing? You, you see, I'm 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 looking for the answer of. Uh, I'm trying to bridge the Node.js goals with the Chaos Community goals at this, at, and try to make a bridge between, for example, I just received, uh, the, I just received a message from, from Rachel, from the organization, and, it, and she believes that we must, uh, uh, must limit the question to one question only, because she believes that the the feel that accessibility should be a priority, no matter the result of the survey. So what am I saying is I'm trying to filter and understand what are the goal for the chaos community and how can we fit the, and bring diversity, use the, all your know-how experience and do is doing this properly, you know? Not doing just by doing. I'm not. We are not. We are not building a great survey just to say, "Hey, hey, we have a survey." No, it's not the point. It's to act, it's to actually have and do something. You know. So I just want to understand how this how this provides. I don't know a background. Uh, okay. uh, uh, it, it's a, how can I say? It's a goal metric. For example, this is a, this is the north that we are achieving okay here's what we are trying to look at the questions that we are building on the survey should reflect this the how can i say the 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 metrics that we typed in this document is it's oh, sort of uh, i i think okay. i think i understand the gap though um so Salo, the the questions we have or trying to put on the survey right now they don't tie specifically to a metric you're wondering whether or not we're trying to tie them to a metric based on the work we're doing here. So think of them, yeah. I, I think we, we can clarify this, so, so no. The short uh, few questions, uh, one or three or four as they were, uh, those are, 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 are a done deal. Those are a separate thing that we are doing outside of this context. In this context, we are beginning to learn how the framework is used to devise metric-based questions. Uh, or metric geared questions, because remember when they asked us, what, how can we help? And the answer was, uh, I can tell you what I can get, you know, to get my life easier, but that's not the answer that I would like to give. The answer that we would like to give is how can we really help? How can, how can people who are struggling and unable to express that they are, how can they close those gaps, not close the gaps of someone who thinks they know how their life can be improved, but rather how to actually close gaps in open source. So, I get it. So, so it's going to take us a bit to get there, right? And, and we're, we're walking along to learn, I guess. Um, is that a, um, a good uh, way to... I understood. I'm just thinking too far, too far. I got it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, we are uh, previous steps before. Okay, I yeah, understand. Maybe, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, another way to look at it is also you asked about the goal of chaos and your goal and how those match the right. your goal is to have an impact in the community and you're trying from my understanding to have a survey to figure out where you are right now where you should go and what actions to take you and what we actually do to uh, first of all i think uh, the first goal of the community is to understand how we are today what we are facing. We, we don't have any data, we have personal experience, but we don't have any for info, real data, or high level data that says, okay, the, we have this percentage of people, they, they struggle with communication. These other people, they struggle with, I don't know, uh, vision accessibility. And also, we don't, I believe this is the first, the first goal we don't have. The second is to it's, it's, it start the discussion that what can be done to help and then 
uh, as a community, we can't uh, do or demand nothing. It's about suggestion. But the collect the the good the, the good collect of the data the survey doing properly, it provides a background for the argumentation. For example, as a simple example, uh, people with blind uh, color blindness. Uh, we, we do know that there are a lot of people with color blindness and a simple suggestion is a contrast button to change the contrast on the site. It is, and, but it is not only about the color blindness, it's about uh, the, the more accessibility we could, could uh, get. That, that, uh, and my primary concern is, is personal concern is by ignorance, doing something and, and neglecting or, how can I say, forget um, uh, a group of people, do you understand? And then I, shit, I forgot, you know, th that's my primary concern. Right. And, and the deadline, because from what I heard here, uh, it will be, which uh, Rachel asked me, asked us to, bring a survey until 30 November. So that's what I'm, I'm across my mind is those, those. So, so can we address those concerns um, maybe in a follow-up meeting? So let, let's, let's get this. Out. Yeah, not, 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 not yeah. to lose focus. I just. Okay, perfect. So, so the, the goal and the concern that you have, especially the first one, just figuring out what's the baseline, where are we today? That is something that you want to figure out, but it's the same thing that other communities want to figure out as well. And so this is what chaos, the goal of the chaos project is to get together, have a place where you can ask these questions. How do we go about doing this? How do we find out what the baseline is? What kind of survey questions can we ask? What kind of interviews can we do? Where do we get the information and how do we do it in an, in an effective way? And so this is what chaos is about, building out this best practices and the knowledge base for doing this work. And that is our goal, to collect these ways for answering your questions. And so the work that we were just looking at, the Google Doc, that is just one very small part when we look at events, that we want to understand the event diversity and now we are in deep in the weeds describing how do you actually go about collecting the data and doing, getting the answers that you need. So does that clarify this connection between what your goals are and chaos goal are, how you can leverage the chaos project for building out the work that you're doing and building on the knowledge that we are collecting here across many different projects. That's awesome, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, and then in return, we always like to hear about efforts like yours so we can learn and in integrate those lessons learned back into our best practices and knowledge base. So going back to the metric attendees demographic, um, you can see this as a training ground if you want for the discussion we want to have next about um, the metrics that you care about more. So I'll share my screen. Uh, you're welcome to work on your own screen on the metric, but I can also drive the conversation just to show you a little bit how the Chaos Project works with metrics. So we always start with a question. How diverse are the attendees? Then we have a description. In this case, we agreed on attendee demographics help indicate the potential for different viewpoints and broader perspectives at an event. The objectives why we wanna do this is to determine if attendees are from diverse backgrounds. We want to determine if the diversity is shared across different event spaces like sessions and tracks and help retain attendees from diverse backgrounds for future events. And then how do we actually go about understanding attendees demographics? There are different ways we can collect data. 
One is to analyze registration data for attendee demographics. Um, and so here is um, where we would uh, to do uh, demographic questions for registration forms. So that's something we can provide here, but a lot of demographic questions are already asked by registration uh, providers like what we're using, uh, Event Breeder. They already have predefined demographic questions. Another way to get data is to interview attendees to understand more about why the event did or did not meet their diversity and inclusion expectations. And this is really a subjective response. And what you can ask in the interview is what can this event do to improve the diversity and inclusion at this event? Or what are some examples of how this event met or exceeded your diversity and inclusion expectations? Met, exceeded. Uh, I, I think this is too positive. So here we might want to revert it and say, we want to have um, also negative responses. Like, or fell short of your diversity and inclusion expectations. That way it's a bit more inclusive. Uh, are you trying to speak? I think you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the announcement is throwing me off a bit. Uh, so I, sa I said I wouldn't complain, but I guess, you know, I got, just got thrown off. Uh, so, so I have one question. Um, I feel that we jump from um, how can it be improved? To, um, to a question that seems to be two questions in one, whether or not the person feels it met or did not meet their expectations is, um, is something you can infer from the examples, but is not concrete. So maybe you wanna first ask them, did it meet um, your expectations, you know, at rank? And then you would then ask them, okay, what are the examples for to you know um towards your ranking you said you found it neutral uh give a positive and a negative you said you found it positive give a positive um, maybe a negative but uh, you know so 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 splitting those into two questions one is quantitative just rank and the other is um, um qualitative um, um and, and that would be open-ended i believe uh, so it's an interview question for sure um does that um, right and so i think the second question you're wanting is already in the survey we said huh. will your diversity and inclusion expectations um and so from an interview perspective asking uh i think we may have lost you here for this moment uh <laughs> And inferring the actual level. Yeah, we had a Forrest Gump moment. Uh, <laughs> guys, I, I have a question about the some words. For example, the when you talk about diversity and, and inclusion, it uh, for for each one it has a different meaning. You know, uh, for the LGBT community it has one meaning. For for example. Uh, my, uh, for my wife, she's a, uh, how can I say, uh, I don't know English, but people that talk by hands, I don't know that. Uh, so it, it represents, another, when, we, when I saw a question, when, how well did the event meet your diversity and inclusion expectation? Should we have, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, different like uh, uh, bullet points, so okay, uh, Gender, I don't know if that's the PC word, but uh, gender, diversity, uh, and, and those kind of questions. Oh, we already have the, uh, okay. Yep, <laughs> you're, you're spot on, you're spot on. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> very good question. And so to define but, what we're talking about here, 
We have diversity is how different are the people present. Inclusion is how well do we enable these different people to work together. Retention is how long do different people stay engaged. And attraction is how well do we extend a hand to different newcomers. And then, yes, we are very well aware um, that we have gender identity, sexual orientation, age, location, socioeconomic status, tenure, race, and ethnicity, first language, confidence with English, dis or ability. And I think what your wife is experiencing would fall into this category with uh, being able to talk with her hand. That's definitely an ability that I don't have. And then, uh, the, and then that brings me the question: If we build the we, on the on the questions that we are suggesting, we are asking for the the diversity, the the person that is at, uh, attending the, the the question answer. Does that does that person has this? Uh, how can I say these categories and their mind? You see, you see, that's uh, my, or we should bring them in the, bring a context, I don't know. I think that's a good, good question, good consideration to have. Uh, because, because my concern is how, how, uh, how well I can consider the, the answer to be true or false, how, well, how, how, uh, how close should the, the real situation we, we are going to have if, if you have uh, three distinct groups uh, answered the same question, and for them, uh, they all could say true, but it represents uh, different meaning for each of, uh, of them. That's my, my, my concern. One idea that comes to mind is uh, leading definition style. So you say, you know, uh, before you ask about a particular um, sometimes subjective or, or, or currently in upgrades, uh, you know, terminology that is evolving, I think is a good word. Um, before you ask a question using a term that is likely uh, having more than one variant, you actually say, given that the definition of di di you know, uh, diversity and inclusion being so, uh, answer the following questions, right? So, so you lead with a with a uh, definition, and you can ask, you know, uh, do you have a, another definition uh, that you would like us to, you know, factor in for later surveys, or you know, um, so so standardizing terminology or or stipulative terminology before using it um, is is one approach that comes to mind. Um, so, you know, we're not questioning whether their definition is different, better or worse. We're just saying limiting it to this particular specific stipulative form. Um, you know, we can answer those questions and then we can ask them, would you rather redefine this somewhere, you know, in a different way? Um, does that help? Yeah, I find that so. Yeah, I think it does. I've also got a, an idea for questions like this as well. Kind of the opposite direction would be to add um, add some ambiguity or some like without subjectivity. So like saying something like how welcoming was the event to you today? And that would be easier to understand from both the um, analysis perspective and the, um, and the perspective of someone who it does not know a lot about this but wants to contribute through the survey. Uh, that's kind of the opposite of the leading definition, but I, could, I think both of them would work. Okay, so I, I think you have really good points. Um, what? Uh, is, it, is it okay to link the answers to the, for example, how well did the event meet your diversity, right? It's your diversity. So if we have uh, uh, information saying what kind of the diversity the person is include the person that is uh, answering is included uh, should light up on the, the kind of the, if he has or no included, if you consider only their, their, their category, as sort of speaking, I'm sorry. So 
let me let me try to put this into different words and see if this resonates with you. One of the ways that we look at the data is through filters. So in the implementation section, I added a filter section where we can group all of the responses by the demographics so that we can see for each demographic as they self-identified in, let's say, the survey, how they responded. That way, we can see if people who identify as LGBT, that if they answered this question, how well did the event with your diversity inclusion, more negatively than the average, then it tells us we need to improve on the LGBTQ front. That's, that's a good solution. Okay, I like that. That's a great improvement here. Okay, so, but Sola, you had uh, another idea, and I'm trying to think how to put this in. Do you have an idea for how to get your idea? You said something about I, um, yeah. defining terms before using them. Uh, but, yeah, and it's called the stipulative terminology section. That's usually when you're writing a, like a document and you have a definition that is a little bit watery, uh, and you want to make sure readers are um, taking your version of the definition. So you say it's a stipulated term um, for, for, you know, so you leave with that and then everybody's on the same page what that word would mean when it's being used. Uh, I'm just re repurposing this. Um, so I say, we say, you know, before the questions you lead with stipulating what, what the term will mean and then asking the question in the context of that term uh, as defined. Um, so those words we have on books that has uh, on the bottom of the page, right? That says what meaning, the meaning of that word. Yeah, like acronyms. In books, you find a lot of, like, more commonly, you find acronyms, right? A section for acronyms. So right. it's in the similar part in a book where you would say, and stipulative terms. And then you would say, uh, you know, um, here the word good means, you know, anything that is not bad. You know, that's one bad example of a stip. <laughs> no, but I, I follow, it's, it's, but, but, but I like it. It's, 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 yeah, so, so, but thank you for, because I was going to ask you, you know, how do we go about documenting, um, um, uh, you, you know, a moment of realization like the one we had and you were just doing it right now. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to lose these insights because, so I don't want to lose the, the way I think about this is it's not specific to this metric, attendance demographic. Your thought is really about survey best practices. So I think we need to have a section somewhere talking about survey best practices. Yeah. So, but I captured it here. So at some point we can transfer it over Perfect. to the best practice section. Probably. Mm. So I feel like this top part, analyze registration data for attendee demographics, um, is, ident is uh, duplicating this one here, quantify the demographics of attendees and then use registration data for attendee demographics if available. So I prob propose to remove this top part. I agree with that. I don't hear anyone opposing, so. We still don't have any concrete. additional thoughts and horizontal line, the metric technically ends here with the resources. Okay, I think we are done with attendee demographics. One big thing they added today is the filters, which is really good addition. And then I think we are ready to move on to different work. What do you say? That's okay with me. Anyone else has thoughts about the attendee demographics metrics? Yeah, so um, hopefully um, our, um, you know, creative um, mindset will kick in, um, you know, a week or two from now. 
<laughs> you know, we're still more like, uh, okay, we're, we're soaking, you know, information at this point. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's totally fine i've been soaking for the past year or so so it's uh it's definitely understandable and i'm throwing you in the deep end i'm just saying okay let's get our hands dirty and do stuff and i'm super happy that you're engaging in the conversation and the discussion so this is, this is great yeah and i'm only partially distracted which is rare so <laughs> Uh, but I'm actually distracted on on uh, stuff on on the repo itself, your repo. So, so you know, like the fact that I'm doing this, I'm 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 really really happy. <laughs> is there so while you're on the repo looking around, is there anything that you have questions about or ideas or improvements? Or yeah, it does relate to this. So, if you don't mind, can I share my screen quickly to tell you what I was doing to try to stay in the same. Uh, pop yes, like be distracted writing code that does a completely different thing unrelated. Um, so, so uh, I'm going to share this and move this out of the way. Um, so, so while we were working, I was thinking it takes a few links for someone to go to the doc. And I understand that this uh, cannot just be um, um, due to um, not having the links here, but rather you want people to go and read things before they can access the doc. Um, so I thought I would just fork and propose this idea. Uh, I, I, you know, we're editing this doc and the link obviously relates to the first focus area. So I thought if we switch from this table uh, and add the link here, um, so, so we're basically just adding a third column um, and putting active links and then removing them when they're no longer active, if that will be the case in the future. Um, is that uh, something um, worth considering? I like the idea. And I think we can certainly add a column. I have one suggestion to make, mm -hmm. and that is right now we were talking about about attendee demographics, which is a subpage under event diversity. So if you go into event diversity, there's a new table. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so we could do that on the on the respective page. Um, do we want to do a high level link here instead of saying draft? We would say attendee demographics. Um, but that will that column will become boggled. Um, which I, I anticipated, kind of. Um, the other suggestion, though, because uh, you know I always uh, try to have like two things up my sleeve or more. Um, I understand that people like Markdown for many of its concise features, but if if you have a table and your line is uh, more than eighty characters or soft wrapping, then you're you're already losing the benefit of using Markdown table notation. Um, what people often forget is that HTML has convenience syntax where inside a table, you don't need to close a row. You don't need to close a, a, a cell. Um, and that spaces out the text. I know it doesn't look like a table anymore, um, but it's, it, you're using the shorthand notation. Uh, every time you open a cell, it closes the cell before it. So you don't have all this clutter of HTML. Um, so, so this is a balance between writing, you know, um, spec uh, passing conforming HTML um, and uh, spec acceptable uh, HTML versus the original um, suit, basically, which, you know, um, this way we can add more than one draft. So what I'm trying to say here is that we can say uh, here, this is uh, attendee demographics. And then what we end up with is something like this, um, as opposed to when it was bars and, you know, um, did I make any sense? I, I don't know if I do. <laughs> so I think there are two proposals in here. One is to switch to HTML versus Markdown. 
for the table definition? Yeah, for legibility when you're editing, yes. Um, I, I don't have a clear preference, but I certainly see the point because I know how <laughs> difficult it can be with big uh, markdown tables. So yeah, why don't you open a pull request and then we'll see what others have to say. And then next week, um, you can see if you want to merge it. So, so I, I suspect we will move or, or copy this into event diversity, into the table inside event diversity as well. So, so let's just open it up and, and you know, get those uh, inputs uh, clear. OK, enough distracting. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, Guys, I, my time is short. I need to go. Uh, I would like to ask you guys a question. Uh, we are going to have a meeting on the Node.js with, with Rachel and probably the, with probably the, uh, I forgot her name. Uh, um, there, there is some more, more that I can't, can't find now. I'm, but I'm gonna, I want to I wanna know if you guys want to wanna join. Uh, I'm gonna share with you guys the, uh, the 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 link meeting when we have the uh, uh, calendar. So uh, I can I would like you guys to if you guys want you guys are really welcome to join the meeting and bring your insights and help us to uh, how can I say. Uh, do this right. <laughs> yeah, Robin Jean. Thank you. Thank you, Salah. Yeah, so yeah. I would like to invite you guys too. So if you if you guys wanna wanna join us uh, and bring your your perspective and uh, uh, help us to do this on the Node.js on the other side. So you know. That sounds great. Um... We don't so, have a date yet, but uh, I'll, I'll post on the Slack channel as soon yeah. as I, I, I get with her. Uh, I believe it will be today, uh, 1 p.m. Central to 2 p.m. Central. I don't know, Central is what is United States time? Mm, not sure. Well, I'll check out and I'll, I'll reply to you guys on the, the Slack channel, okay? I really yeah, need no. to go. And Gorgon Gor also mentioned in the chat uh, about the mailing list. It'd be nice to see you on there too. Yeah. So, so I, I think this is uh, this is kind of um, uh, short notice. Um, it's um, it's we'll, we'll definitely um, you know um, try to schedule a more um, you know like a, 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 a larger ma mailing list yeah. approach meeting. Um, uh, I think this is this is uh, based really on on just um, as as the new executive director and as a new initiative, we just you know um, had the um, you know opportunity to just uh, I guess introduce the initiative or something. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, so I'm 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 gonna open the PR. Uh, I'm gonna be here. Um, Sorry, guys. I'm supposed to go. Okay, my boss is asking me. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Hey, thanks for. <laughs> all right. I guess. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we didn't lose um, another um, um, insight. But um, yeah. So, so please join us in today's meeting. I mean, this is all happening. I think because of joining the meeting last week. Um, you know, um, things are are being positive on our end, and I, I really appreciate. Um, uh, the fact that we ended up, um, um, you know, connecting is is uh, just having you know effects everywhere. Um, now, now for the work, which uh, uh, I hope we will settle down and figure out how to keep our heads straight uh, and, and do actual busy work. Um, so, um, so we finished off that doc. I'll open the PR. Um, that's that's my little contribution as I soaked in uh, while you guys were editing, um, and um, 
Okay, so did you hear anything at all? <laughs> I heard bits and pieces like that there will be a meeting later and I should swatch Slack for an invite and yeah. that you will open your pull request. Yeah. So I get the gist of what's being said. All right, well, well I guess that makes one of us. Uh, <laughs> So no, like um, I guess the meeting is 1 p.m. Central today, and it's news to me. Like I know it was coming. Uh, did we lose you all together? Oh uh, no, I think I'm I think here. I turned off the video. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So so um, yeah. So so I, I we would love for for you guys to join. Uh, I, I guess you know one or two people that that would be fair but I, uh, I I don't even know what link we should use to join that meeting that is technically two hours from now I'm not wrong uh, central time is one hour away from Eastern time and that's is it one or two hours away from Eastern? Uh, at 1 p.m. US Central is in one hour in one hour okay good because you guys would have came as we're done right so uh, so it's one hour from now um, and um, it's definitely something that came up over the weekend. Uh, and Salo, Salo and uh, Rachel have been um, connecting about it. So, so um, we'll be there. Um, um, as for the gearing towards metrics for future work uh, in the Node.js initiative, and, and we, we completely cannibalized your meetings. So sorry about that. Um, we are on a journey and we're just starting so so um i guess we don't need to worry about it at this point you know we don't have much time um the fact that you're traveling um you know um thank you so much for your time anyways right yes thank you for your time as well all right perfect um hopefully we'll see you guys in an hour uh we'll send a link where exactly i don't know um, I, I, I think we can post in the Slack channel, and Matt, I can, I can give you just a little um, uh, link uh, on how to get to the Slack channel. Um, okay. I'll, just I'll send you my email right now, or I'll just put my email in chat because I think we're the, um, the ones here. It looks like you're the host at this point, too. Uh, which one? Uh, it looks like you've become the host once Georg left. He just left on the Wi-Fi. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so you may have to stop recording at this point. Um, our, I'm not sure. Oh, no, Georg's back. Uh, yeah, so I think he took over the recording while I was stopping. <laughs> yeah, that feels like the button is, you know, playing games with me here. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I also... Uh, uh, I I didn't hear you, Georg. I said my internet kicked me out completely, and I didn't hear anything that you said in the last three minutes or so. That's okay. We're just talking about the meeting in an hour. So okay, yeah. I I know I have time, so I will watch Slack for it and then join. If oh, I okay. Perfect. Hang you. Okay. So um, yeah. So I'm um just just uh, tail end um. We are taking things step by step, but a lot is happening now that we're, you know, now we're in the sweet spot where things are happening. So, so I, yeah. you know, I'm optimistic and um, thank you so much. Okay, then I propose we close the meeting for today and continue next week. And in the meantime, through GitHub and mailing lists. And that sounds good. Yeah, so um, sure. after I stop the recording, I'll just uh, coordinate quickly with you, Matt, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Because, uh, you know, I already wrote um, 